leadership is res resiliency ultimately. Um, and you know, you only learn that uh, from being, uh, you know, pounded in the sand and, and you know, walking, you know, in the wrong direction or, uh, you know, uh, being, you know, dressed down. I mean, it, uh, and it's only with those experiences that you understand that the greatest le lessons in life um, are your sort of, it's not necessarily your comebacks, it's just centering yourself, understanding where you are, and reapproaching re -approaching the situation again. And so I think resiliency is the most important thing a leader uh, can possess and a leader can transmit to anybody else. So Yale Law School provided many, many things to me. I think the two principal things it provided, were one was very specific and one sort of abstract. The specific thing Yale Law School gave me were frameworks, ways to think, to think logically, to question, um, to not start with an answer, but start with many questions. And you know, business school sort of tries to teach you that in the Toyota production process and what have you, but they don't go, and I don't know the business schools go as far as Yale Law School will go, to frameworks, logic, uh, and thinking of questions before answers. Uh, in fact, never really having to come to the conclusion, uh, because depending on the questions you're asking, you're gonna come to different answers for the same sort of question. It's all how you approach it. The more abstract thing Yale provided was um, time, and, and time to think in an environment that I had never been to and had not since been in that was so um, uh, just the depth, of, uh, the depth of intelligence, of conversation, of, uh, of, of thinking, of, of topics, of um, concerns about the world. And for me, the ability to think, you know, up in the library, you know, which is where I spent a lot of time, um, was indispensable. You know, I don't think that Endeavor would exist in many ways if I had not had that time. So there's no secret sauce. It's because um, I like to build. I like, I'm an operator. You know, I even knew at business school, like, uh, you know, I have been in investment management for some time, but, you know, fundamentally, I'm not an investor in so, so much as I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur. And I think the odds uh, are always enhanced when you apply yourself. And so um, I, I think, you know, you've got in venture, you've got sort of this, this notion that, you know, one and 10 or two and 10, you know, that can be true if you're gonna like, you know, scattershot you know, sort of your, your, uh, your LP's capital and see what happens. And maybe, you know, work with your entrepreneurs here and there, hire someone or make an induction. If you're really like essentially, you know, SVP business, you know, senior vice president business development, you know, theoretically for a company you're involved in, you can improve its odds remarkably. Now, everything depends on doing your diligence before you invest. And by the way, Yale Law School was so critical in that because I was able to learn, I learned how to focus at Yale Law School, okay? Like, you know, my mind just sort of goes in many directions. And, you know, Yale got me to focus. It, you know, it, I, got, I, I learned how to center on an argument, like how to, cre how to like create an argument, you know, the brief, right? Um, and, uh, you know, how to, uh, how to sort of break things down and, and, you know, for the general, specific, et cetera. And so that really helps in what I do. And so Yale Law School plays absolutely to every company I look at, from a framing, from a diligence perspective, from a questions perspective. We talked earlier about you know questions being much more important than answers. That if you know how to do that, and you like finance, try to get into venture capital, because being able to ask questions is key to venture capital. Entrepreneurship is a, is a study in uh, being a polymath without actually being technically a polymath. Everybody should be, everybody can be a polymath, honestly. And entrepreneurs are polymaths, not necessarily because they're, you know, intellects are, you know, can score as one or whatever, you know, mensa or however. It's, entrepreneurs are people who consume information from all kinds of directions. And, you know, it takes a certain mind. It, if you're risk averse, you're not gonna do that in the first place. You're gonna stay within your lane and you're gonna move forward. Now, I don't understand how you can be 20 something today coming out of Yale School or being at Yale Law School today and having and being in a lane. The world today is so, in, I mean, it is a bonanza of like, of challenges and uh, opportunities and everything is integrated to me. I mean, you, you can, there's not one major challenge in the world I can think of that doesn't require like multiple vantage points of thinking and approaches. And it also teaches you, entrepreneurship is also fundamentally, I think, a non-zero sum game. 
If you're not a non-zero-sum thinker, well, look, you could be a zero-sum thinker and it's going to work out great for you and there are lots of examples of that in the world. I think if you're going to be a satisfied, personally satisfied entrepreneur and you know, you're going to you know, be an old person in your rocking chair looking back and feeling really good about things, you're a non-zero-sum thinker because non-zero-sum thinkers are always thinking about the best way to put you know, the, the excess food, as, as you know, Wright says in his neighbor's, uh, neighbor's stomach, right? Because uh, you have to empower others. Fortitude, um, being truthful, despite you know uh, the ease with which maybe not even speaking would provide you uh, sort of a more of a sort of uh, you know way forward, shall we say? Um, uh, and authenticity, authenticity is a really hard thing. You know, it's probably one of the hardest things, and uh, it's hard to. You know, we have the imposter syndrome, we have self-doubt, we have all these things. I mean, these are the human fundamentals that make authenticity such a, um, such a struggle. It's surrounding your people, yourself with really good people. And that's where Yale Law School comes into play. It's come because it's at Yale Law School that I met some of the most authentic people I've ever met. I mean, that is one of the great memories of this place. Uh, it's just the authenticity of the fellow students, what they believe in, even if they're like in pursuit of the knowledge to, to sort of achieve it. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it's, I have, <laughs> Yeah, I've never again been in such a, in a surrounding like that with such a concentration of young minds, not all young minds, but you know, young minds, um, you know, who, who are purposeful, purposeful um, and their, their, their egos are not leading the way. So I think authenticity is uh, the thing that I focus the most on, but I'm also forgiving. You have to forgive yourself because if you hold yourself to that standard, you're going to probably not make it and you're going to punish yourself and you can be self-destructive. There's lots of things that, you know, fall from that. So, you know, be forgiving. Forgive yourself and forgive others. Um, you know, if, you, if you're looking just for authenticity in other people, you know, you're gonna have a very, very small group of friends. And um, because it's a high bar, um, but everybody has that potential. And so that's something that I think should be a pursuit as a value, not a value in and of itself.